Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife right here. This is the CRKT Limited Edition Titanium and uh, M390 Crossbones Pocket Knife. Um, first off, though, in the name of full disclosure, I want to thank CRKT for sending this guy along. Now, to be clear, the one that I reviewed this morning, well, actually, I reviewed about a year ago, but aired this morning, um, was not sent to me by CRKT. That was uh, sent to me by an entirely different gem of a human being. But this one, the new Titanium one, was sent directly from Cricket. Um, they reached out to me said, hey, Nick, we appreciate your videos. You know, we appreciate the honesty and we want you to check out this new guy here. And it makes sense because I've been asking for roughly exactly this. Well, not the crossbones, but a, a variety of other things. Um, but nevertheless, they said we want to talk to, I said, of course, I, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. They said, yep, we get it. Thank you very much. And so they sent this guy along. We have to assume, well, I guess we would assume this is the most QC version ever. Um, and we can certainly assume that I've done my best not to let this affect my review, but that's where this guy came from just so you know. Next thing, size comparison. This is roughly the same size as the CRKT crossbones. Um, here it is against the Ontario rat number one, rat number two, Spydeco Delica. And uh, here it is against another high-end CRKT knife, the uh, CRKT Shock, uh, which is so... Oh, Boy, is it big. Um, so anyways, uh, there is that. Um, and here it is against the Graham Razel. Hint, hint. Anyways, I digress. Um, so this is actually a very interesting piece in that this is basically the CRKT crossbones, uh, except they have remade it using a different factory and using higher-end materials. They have been flirting lately uh, with some higher-end ver versions of the Pilar uh, the, with S35VN and whatnot, but they've been flirting with the idea of making their great designs because they've got a stable of great designs with really nice materials, making, you know, collective, uh, you know, higher-end collective versions of some of their existing designs, and that's a beautiful Beautiful thing. And so um, what I'm going to do, rather than giving a full re-review of the crossbones, because my feelings are, gonna, are basically the same, I'm going to talk about what I like about this version, what I don't like about this version, and then give some final thoughts. Um, on the good side, um, to start with, this is uh, very, very nice in a lot of good ways. Um, one of the big ones is that um, they have changed it from being a, a, a liner lock with aluminum to being a frame lock in titanium. This is a titanium frame lock here. The overall design isn't terribly different. All of the functional situation is basically the same. They've made a couple of little changes. Like, for instance, they've changed the uh, flipper tab now. has this little hollow space in there, presumably to maybe knock down weight or just to look cool. I don't know. But either way, um, that's now a situation. But everything else is roughly the same. I mean, it feels like substantially the same knife, just they've frame-locked it. That's kind of neat, kind of interesting, kind of different. Um, but this means, though, that the, the nice parts of the design are roughly the same. It still is a very attractive design. The, the the crossbones based on the Jeff Park bones is a very nice, uh, attractive design. And, uh, it carries through here. And they've done a lot of the same things in terms of the blade. And I mean, substantially, if you like the crossbones, you're going to like this guy a lot. But you're going to like it even more because the materials on this are very, very nice. We've gone to a titanium frame lock here, and we have also gone to M390 blade steel. M390 is, if not the best blade steel out there, uh, it is among the best. Um, it's chemically the same as 204P and 20CV, roughly. Um, but nevertheless, it is a very, very nice blade steel. And so it's really nice to see that on a higher-end version like this. The, the, the thing to me that's best about this guy pardon me, that is most exciting by far about this is that this is kind of exactly what I've been hoping for at a CRKT. Because like I said, they have this incredible stable of designs, these, these designs that are really, really good, but are desperately crying out for uh, to, to be made a little bit. No, Razel, this isn't your video. Go away. Okay, sorry about that. He's a little recalcitrant like that. Anyways, they've got this stable of really good designs that desperately could use to be made the higher-end versions, to have these love letter, spent, um, you know, editions made with high-end material. They have needed that for so long. And so the fact that we're seeing this here is absolutely an amazing thing. If you are a lover of the Jeff Park Crossbones um, Cricket Knife, or frankly, even of the mid-tech, this is actually a really, really nice option because this will give you a, uh, this will give you it gives you the same design that you've been after, but in a format with nicer steel, nicer overall construction, um, greater fit and finish, that kind of thing. Not necessarily the mid tech. The mid techs are very nicely done, but this gives you a slightly lower price point, maybe a little more carryable depending on it. But anyways, this gives you a great option if you are already in love with this design. And that is one of the very best things CRKT could be doing is making the budget versions and then giving people the option to pick up a higher end one.
if they so please, if they are so in love. And so to me, that all is the good. It's exactly what I've been hoping for in these higher-end trim levels. Um, excellent material, still the same great elements of the design. It is now a frame lock and with some nice little tiny touches in there. There are unfortunately some bad things. I mean, to start with, it is a limited edition. They have chosen to go the numbered limited edition route, which helps roughly nobody. I mean, no one is going to be out there collecting, hunting down individual ones of these, in my estimation. What that really means is that if you really want one of these guys and you can't buy it right now, it's going to be a pain in the neck and more expensive to get it later. What I'd like, I, what I generally would rather see companies do is just release it as a production knife, and if they run out, order more, and if they, that way, it, you m more people can get them. It may be that they don't sell a bazillion of these at this price point, so they're hedging their bet, but still, I hate to see it abandoned by default. Um, Next thing, unfortunately, some of the issues from the original one remain. For instance, this clip is right on top of the uh, the, the metal texturing here. And in fact, now there's the lock bar, uh, lock bar relief there, which is partially inside, partially outside, which is just not great. Um, the blade is also a little bit thicker. I mean, they're using lion steel, so lion steel just, they, 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 any blade just go whoop when they get, no, that's, that's not true. But still, I don't like seeing blades get needlessly thick because generally blades are needlessly thick and they should go the other direction. Uh, but but the grind on it, I will say, especially by lion steel standards, is pretty thin. I, I do appreciate that very much. Um, it is also a little tiny bit heavier than the original version, um, because the original one was aluminum with some liners, and this is now solid titanium. It feels much more solid. It feels, frankly, like a nicer knife in that domain, but it is something you're going to want to keep in mind as, as a potential problem. Um, next thing, this is 275 bucks, and unfortunately, this, at the moment, is only available through CRKT, so the MSRP price is actually the price, which is weird and scary to me. Um, look, this is a lot of money, um, 100%, and I would absolutely like to see this a little bit lower. But the other thing is, if you are a real lover of this design, and if if they nailed everything else, this would be, I think, a, a reasonable price. The materials are good. The, 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 they could sell this knife for 275 bucks, but you can't let any issues leave the factory. Unfortunately, though, some issues left the factory. The first one I had of this guy, and actually it's the one featured in the disassembly video, um, is, uh, well, it had some troubles. Uh, <laughs> namely, it had a big burr around the detent, which actually made for a very strong detent, but uh, a temporary one. Um, it had some weird splinters in the lock bar. Area. You can see a little tiny bit of this still on this guy. Let's see if I can show that. Oh, here, I'll put the blade in there. Makes it easier to see. A little tiny bit of it still. That was going on, but it also had a huge lock stick, like substantial lock stick. When I mentioned this to CRKT, they sent another one out saying, oh yeah, that's not good, that shouldn't have left the factory, and so they sent me this new one out. Um, and uh, that's great of them, but, uh, well, I'm kind of a reviewer, you would expect that. And unfortunately, this one also has huge amounts of lock stick. I mean, you just saw me try to unlock that and fail. You really have to push very, very hard here. Um, they, they've said that, oh yeah, this will wear in over time, and indeed, very often lock stick will, but... Oh my god, is that bad. And coupled with the fact that this lock bar is relatively sharp here with this scalloping, my thumb does not care for this knife. And unfortunately, other companies have fixed this in the past. I mean, Cricket is not the first company to have lock stick issues coming out of here. And then whether they do it with a lock bar insert, carpet is it. There are lots of approaches for that, but unfortunately, I think it is something they will need to fix here. Or at the very least, I hope they have a talk with their factory, or better still, might be talking to other factories instead who don't have these issues so much. So to me, that's what's not so great here, is that this one has huge amounts of lock stick. The first one had some other issues as well. It is 275 bucks, which is a price I could do if it were perfect, but not quite there. I mean, it's a little heavier than the original. The blade is thicker for some reason, probably well, that makes the heaviness. Um, it's still got some of the same issues as the original, and they've done the limited edition thing, which is silly. So, look, my final conclusion on this guy um, is that this is a great sign from CRKT. Um, CRKT, as I've said many times, has for years been the kings of making great designs at a level at which they no longer appeal to higher-end collectors. There have been many knives that have come across my table that are uh, absolutely great knives, but are just made so poorly that I'm... That, no, Razel, this is not your video. Go away. But that are made so poorly that I'm, I'm not interested in opening them as a part of my collection. I'm not a, a, a big fan of that. And so, given that CRKT has such an incredible stable of 
designs. Um, I, I'd love seeing them hitting both the budget price points they've been at, as well as higher end prices with higher end materials and construction and whatnot. That is amazing. Um, and so I love seeing them expanding into the high end, having the two versions, the budget and the level, which they should keep doing in my estimation, because that's great. Imagine that they drop some brand new design and I, I, I might like it, but I'm not sure. I can pick up the budget one and then if I really like it, pick up the higher end one too. That works better if they're not limited edition, selling out quickly, just saying. But still, that's a great thing because it allows enthusiasts to love these designs at two different levels. People with budget collections will have a great piece for their collection, and people who f fell in love with the budget versions can upgrade the higher end. They might sell a lot of knives twice. And so seeing these love letter models, these models that are just designed for people who fell in love with the crossbones, that's absolutely wonderful. And we're also seeing other things uh, on the higher end. We're seeing like this, the shock, um, which is a huge, really expensive, but actually very, very well made knife at a CRKT. Um, I'll do a full, uh, full review of this guy too, of course. And this one also was sent to me by them, just full disclosure. But nevertheless, seeing these kinds of other high end models, which I can't flip <laughs> because I'm not skilled. Um, but anyways, Seeing this kind of thing is a beautiful thing as well. I really hope we see more higher-end work out of CRKT in the future here. But there are also some frustrations here. They are playing the limited edition game for no damn good reason. Um, the stock on the blade is needlessly thicker, and we need to go the other direction. The price is well above what CRKT is usually charging, and I think people are going to need to get used to paying that for a CRKT. I mean, I've been seeing this online, certainly with this guy, but also with the shock. It, like People are not quite ready to pay this much money for a CRKT. I think they can get there, but they'll have to prove themselves. The thing is, though, in that process of proving themselves, they cannot afford to have QC issues and lockstick as they're launching something brand new. As they're doing a new high-end lineup, they're not al allowed to do this. They need to be doing these pretty much perfectly if they're going to break out a long-term pricing structure, if they're going to convince the world that a $275 or even a $750 CRKT is, you know, worth doing. Well, they, they, they need to do it right. And the the Provoke, the Caswell Corumbity deal, um, that, that was absolutely done right. That was a knife that was great at that price point. And honestly, the shock is very, very good in terms of overall quality. There is very little I can point to here that, that are negatives. And I'm, so if they can keep doing them along this lines rather than like this, then they will earn that. But this one to me felt a little bit like two steps forward, one step back. And so I really hope that for the next one, they're using a different factory or that their factory does better work for them next time. Because that's, that, that was a big disappointment. The thing is, I feel more understanding than usual here because I really think that CRKT expanding into the higher end to complement their budget side is really crucially important for, for them and I think for the industry in general because right now we are at a time where a lot of you know Chinese companies are really doing great work on the budget end. And so if that's all they're making, I, I worry about the long-term viability. But if they have budget models that show off great designs and that they have high-end models to bring people into higher echelons of knife making with the same designs that they already know and love, that's amazing. That's freaking huge. And so having a stable of designs like this or maybe like this, just saying, um, is really, really important to have at a variety of trim levels. That would be great. And so, although it doesn't make it okay to have major issues like lockstick and things like that, I'm more willing to sit through growing pains because I think what they're doing here is important for their long-term future. And in my, uh, what the hell do I know? I'm a random jackass here. But a big ship doesn't turn on a dime, but I think this is an important term. And I also get that finding a, a good factory to work with is hard, and although the factory should know better than that, that, I'm sure there's a process here. So I really, really do strongly support CRKT's vision of multiple trim levels. I badly want to see this happening. And that, that, damn it, Graham Razel, why do you keep coming on screen? Anyways, I, I badly want to keep seeing this happening because there are so many good designs that absolutely need to be uh, have this treatment done. So, although my final my final conclusions here is that this particular knife, the, the M390 Crossbones, has some things it could uh, have some things it could improve. I think the factory could have done a little bit better work here. But that said, I, you got and you got to love the Crossbones to love this knife. If you weren't in love with the original, you're not going to like this one particularly either. But this is a great move in the right direction still, and I really desperately hope that this isn't the last of no bad razel, the last of the high end reworks that we see out of CR. KD in the future. So there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.